This is Daniela White with Urban Christian News Network. Thank you for joining us on this Sunday, January 5th, 2014. Here are the top 10 news stories that you need to know about right now. First today, according to Reuters, U.S. Secretary of State John Kerry voiced confidence on Sunday that the Iraqi government and tribes would be successful in their fight against al-Qaeda and said Washington was not considering sending troops back to Iraq. Sectarian and ethnic tensions have risen in Iraq since the U.S. withdrawal in December of 2011, inflamed by the conflict in neighboring Syria, where mainly Sunni rebels are trying to oust President Bashar al-Assad, who is backed by Shiite Iran. The Iraqi army has joined forces with local tribesmen to battle al-Qaeda, which has teamed up with groups of Syrian rebels to try to create across the Iraqi-Syrian border, a state based on strict medieval Sunni Islamic practice. Kerry told reporters during a visit to Israel that this is a fight that belongs to the Iraqis. We are not contemplating returning. We will help them in their fight, but this fight, in the end, they will have to win. And I'm confident, he said, they can. Second today, according to the Associated Press, a new wave of bombings hit Iraq's capital of Baghdad, killing at least 20 people on Sunday. Officials said the latest assault by militants who have been fighting Iraqi security forces and allied tribes in the country's west. The deadliest attack took place in Baghdad, Shiite, northern Shiab neighborhood, when two parked car bombs exploded simultaneously near a restaurant and a tea house. Officials say those blasts killed 10 people and wounded 26 others. Authorities said that a parked car bomb ripped through the capital Shiite eastern district of Sajre City, killing five and wounding ten more. Another bombing killed three civilians and wounded six in a commercial area in the central Bab al Muadham neighborhood. Two other bombings killed two civilians and wounded thirteen. Medical officials confirmed the casualty figures, and all officials spoke on condition of anonymity, as they were not authorized to release information. Third today, according to the BBC, a South Sudanese army general has been killed in fighting outside the rebel-held town of Bor. A BBC correspondent with government troops said a convoy advancing on Bor came under heavy fire in an ambush. The fighting is continuing as the warring parties meet in Ethiopia to try to agree to a ceasefire. Substantive talks are due to start later on Sunday. The conflict pits supporters of President Salva Kiir against rebels led by his sacked deputy, Riek Makar. It began on December 15th after the president accused Makar of attempting a coup, which Makar denies. At least 1,000 people have been killed and nearly 200,000 have been displaced in the conflict, which has taken on ethnic undertones. Kiir is from the Dinka community and Makar from the New Air Group. Fourth today, according to USA Today News, President Obama is winging his way back to Washington on Sunday, after more than two weeks in Hawaii, ready to pick up his legislative and political agenda for 2014. His list includes health care, unemployment insurance, income inequality, the minimum wage, jobs, and national security agency surveillance programs. In a weekend radio address, Obama said his New Year's resolution is to do everything I can every single day to help make 2014 a year in which more of our citizens can earn their own piece of the American dream. This week, Obama plans to lobby Congress for an extension of unemployment benefits that expired at the turn of the year. He is also expecting Senate confirmation of a new Federal Reserve Chair, Janet Yellen. Sometime this month, the President is expected to make a speech outlining changes to NSA surveillance programs that critics say give the government too much power to spy on people. Obama caps with the month with his State of the Union address on January 28th. Fifth today, according to Fox News, bitterly cold temperatures blowing into the Midwest and Northeast in the coming days are likely to set records disrupt schools along with airports and endanger those who go outside without the proper clothing. The frigid air will begin Sunday and last into early next week, funneled as far south as the Gulf Coast because of what one meteorologist called a polar vortex, a counterclockwise rotating pool of cold, dense air. As a result, forecasters are expecting startling temperatures in many places. 
25 below zero in Fargo, North Dakota, minus 31 in International Falls, Minnesota, and 15 below in Indianapolis and Chicago. Wind chills may reach 50, 60, or even 70 below zero. At temperatures of 15 to 30 below, exposed skin can get frostbitten in minutes and hypothermia can quickly set in. Dr. Brian Mahaney, Medical Director of Emergency Services at Hennepin County Medical Center, Minneapolis, said that people need to protect themselves against the intense cold. They have to wear a hat. They have to have face protection. Mahaney said mittens are better than gloves, layers of dry clothing are best, and anyone who gets wet needs to get inside. Six today, according to the Telegraph, police in Bangladesh fired at protesters and opposition activists torched more than a hundred polling stations on Sunday during a national election boycotted by the opposition and described as flawed by the international community. At least 13 people were killed in election-related violence. Prime Minister Sheikh Hasina's refusal to heed opposition demands to step down and appoint a neutral caretaker to oversee the election led to the boycott undermining the legitimacy of the vote. Opposition activists have staged attacks, strikes, and transportation blockades in unrest that has left at least 288 people dead since last year. Seven today, according to the Associated Press, Egypt's interim president has made a rare visit to see the pontiff of the nation's Orthodox Christians at St. Mark's Cathedral, the papal seat in central Cairo. Sunday's highly symbolic visit to Pope Tawadros II by Adley Mansour was made ahead of the Coptic Christmas, which falls on Tuesday. Mansour was installed by the military on July 3rd to replace Islamist President Mohamed Morsi, removed from office after just a year in which relations between the government and the country's Christians were fraught with tension and distrust. Egypt's Christians account for some 10% of the nation's 90 million people. They are mostly members of the Orthodox Church, one of Christendom's oldest. They long have complained of discrimination by the nation's Muslim majority. Eighth today, the national publication Politico reports that prominent social conservatives are still mentioning former Louisiana legislator and Family Research Council President Tony Perkins as a potential candidate in the state's contentious U.S. Senate race this year. In an article about social conservatives' plans to raise big money nationwide around issues like abortion and same-sex marriage, writer Kenneth Vogel says activists have floated Perkins in particular as a candidate they could get behind. As a member of Louisiana's House of Representatives, Perkins passed the state's covenant marriage law, making it more difficult for people to get divorced. He has been an outspoken opponent of same-sex marriage on the national stage. According to Vogel, several conservatives gathered in Virginia recently to discuss aggressively financing and coordinating political efforts around social issues. The religious right is trying to counter fiscal conservatives who have raised more money and gained more influence in the Republican Party in recent years. If Perkins ran for U.S. Senate in Louisiana, he would hardly be the only person trying to unseat Democratic incumbent Mary Landrieu. Landrieu is a top target for the National Republican Party in 2014, and many candidates have already jumped in the race. Nine today, according to The Hill, Senator Rand Paul will file a class action lawsuit against the National Security Agency soon. His office confirmed to the paper. Paul had been gearing up for months to lead a lawsuit against the agency, charging that the surveillance program gathering metadata on U.S. citizens has violated people's Fourth Amendment rights. He will file the papers in the D.C. District Court as a private citizen. His office did not give the specific timeline for when the senator would file the lawsuit. Breitbart News first reported that Paul would soon file the lawsuit. Paul first broached the idea of a suit last June, asserting if he could get 10 million people to sign up, it would wake up the government to force changes to the program. Tenth and finally today, according to Joy 105 News, a former Lutheran minister from North Carolina says he suffered from sex addiction when he molested young girls during a 2009 mission trip to Haiti. 
the charlotte observer reported friday that larry michael bollinger recounted in u s district court his years of frequenting adult bookstores and prostitutes during his thirty three years as a minister at various churches federal prosecutors accused bollinger of traveling to haiti for illicit sexual conduct with two minor girls one age eleven and the other age twelve he pleaded guilty last year a spokesman for the lazarus project said bollinger had worked as a mission coordinator at the christian charity for several years before his dismissal amid accusations of abuse that's today's top ten news stories you can read these stories and more at urbanchristiannewsnetwork.com as you go throughout this day keep this word in mind isaiah one sixteen and seventeen says wash you make you clean put away the evil of your doings from before mine eyes cease to do evil learn to do well seek judgment relieve the oppressed judge of the fatherless and plead for the widow god loves you he always has and he always will he loves you so much that the bible says in john three sixteen for god so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life if you don't know the lord jesus christ as your savior why don't you get to know him today just believe in your heart that jesus christ died was buried and rose by the power of god for you pray and ask him to come into your heart today and he will romans ten thirteen says for whosoever shall call upon the name of the lord shall be saved Thanks so much for listening. I'm Daniela White with Urban Christian News Network. May God bless your day.